How's it going everyone? Sean here from hiphopaudioschool.com and today we're going to be looking at routing your audio in Pro Tools. I'm going to keep it extremely simple in this video. This is going to be like a beginner's guide, just getting started, understanding the tracks and when to use them. So let's go ahead and just jump right into it. So the very first thing you're going to want to do is create an audio track if you're going to be recording your vocals or pretty much anything if you're recording guitar or whatever. You're going to create an audio track to do that because you're capturing audio and you want it into your DAW. So let's start off by creating a track. Shift Command N is the shortcut to bring this up, or you can just come up here to track and then select new. So new tracks pops up here. The very first thing that pops up on the left is going to be the number of tracks that you choose. I'm gonna start with just one. So you could create more than that if you want, but I'm gonna keep it simple for this video and just create one audio track here. So the next part is what is it? Is it mono or is it stereo? So if you're recording into a single microphone, you're recording vocals, guitar, whatever it is, and it's a single microphone, that's mono. If you have two microphones recording something and you're doing some type of stereo setup, like an AB setup for drums or something like that, or an XY setup for uh, guitar, that's gonna be a stereo setup because you have two microphones. So if you're using one microphone, mono, two microphones, stereo. So this is just one, I'll be using uh, mono. Audio track, there's folders, there's aux inputs, master faders, all these other things. We're just gonna be looking at the two that are most, actually we'll look at three, but these are the ones that are very, the most used when you're recording or mixing or mastering or doing any of that. So your audio track is, like I said, for recording audio, that's what we wanna do. We wanna record a vocal, samples or ticks, I just leave it at samples and let's go ahead and name it, let's say, vocal and create. All right, so we have our audio track and this is what we're gonna use to record some vocals. So let's just go ahead and record something really quick. And you could do it, hit record, hit play. Check one, two, check, 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 check one, two, check one, two, check. All right, so now we have an audio track that recorded our vocal. So let's listen to that. Check one, two, check, 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 check one, two, check one, two, check. All right, cool. So our audio track captured that. Now, what if you want to add some effects? Say you have multiple vocals that you want to record in. You do you do multiple things. Let's do a, just as an example, let's create another vocal track. And this one is going to be our ad-libs. So let's record something in real quick. Check one, two, check, 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 check one, check. two, check one, two. All right, so I need to make sure that I'm recording on the right spot. So make sure your input is correct. So this is a, a good way. I'm glad I messed up on this part because now I can show you how to fix it, is my new audio track defaulted to my input number two on my interface. You need to make sure that you're recording through where your microphone is plugged in to your interface. And I'm plugged into the first preamp on my interface. So this is mic one, it might be called uh, preamp one, or it might be called something else for you. Uh, depends on your interface, it depends on your um, IO setup. But for this one, it's gonna be the first one. It's track, it's the first input there. So now you can see I have audio. So I can delete this blank thing that didn't record anything, hit record. Check one, two, check, 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 check one, check. two, check, check one, two, check. All right, now I have my little ad libs in there. So I could go ahead and unarm that. And you can see I have some ad libs, I have the main track. Now let's say I wanna record, or I want to apply some reverb to these. And I want the exact same reverb sound on both of them. So there's two ways to go about this. I'll show you the first way, which is simply using the tracks as they are. And the second way would be sending it out to a new track, which I'll show you in a little bit. So let's go ahead and pull up a reverb unit on here. So reverb, let's just use the stock uh, D verb, mono slash stereo, because it's a mono track, but I want the reverb to be stereo. So that's why I selected that one. There's a bunch of different settings on here. We don't have to change any of them for the purpose of this video, because I'm not gonna set up reverb really. Uh, it, this is just an example. But the one that we really need to pay attention to is this mix section down here. So if you want reverb on your vocals, you don't want it 100% reverb because that's it's gonna sound like this. Check one, two, check, 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 check one, two. I don't wanna sound like I'm in the Grand Canyon when I'm doing a rap vocal or something like that. I just want a little bit 
of reverb added on there. So what I could do is take this from 100% and back it way off. So maybe you want to do uh, 18, 17%, somewhere around there. You could mess with it where you want it, but now let's listen. Check one, two, check, 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 check one, two, check one, two, check. Sounds much better. You get that nice reverb on there, and you also have your dry signal mixed in with it, so you have the best of both worlds, and you're not overdoing it with the reverb. So that's how you could use it on there. And say you want the same reverb down on this track, you just hold down Option or Alt, and then grab this plugin and bring it down to the next one. All right, so that's one way to have the exact same reverb on two different tracks. If you do this for 10 different tracks or 15 different tracks or however many audio tracks you have, then it ends up being a lot of reverb plugins that you're copying and pasting over when you could do it a different way. So let's say I want the same, I want that reverb and I want it on both of these tracks, but I don't wanna to have to set it up over and over. So let me show you a different way to set that up. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these off and let's go ahead and set up a new track, Shift Command N. Now I'm gonna create a stereo track and the reason for stereo is because reverb, I want it to be wide. I want it to take up the whole stereo field, the left to the right and everywhere in between stereo sound. Mono is just right there in the middle, that's mono. I don't want my reverb to be just there in the middle, I want it to be wide, so that's why I'm doing stereo. And then I don't want it to be an audio track. What I want it to be is an aux input. So an aux input is a great way to send from several different audio tracks into this aux input and apply a reverb or a delay or some type of effect that all of those different um, audio tracks can capture the same reverb settings. And you could get it at different levels, which I'll show you in a sec. So aux input, samples, let's just call this reverb and press create. Okay, so a couple things you have to do when setting up an aux input. The input for this aux input is going to be empty. It says no input. That means nothing sending into it right now. So click on that, go to bus, and then go to bus menu, whichever one you want, but I like to go to the first one, and just select any bus that's not being used. So let's just go with bus 11 and 12. All right, now, on my audio tracks, both of these, under sends, I need to select bus 11 and 12. If you don't see these sections right here, you could always go up to view, go to edit windows view, and select the one that you want. And in this case, it sends A through E. That's what we're gonna be using. Uh, inserts are for where you put your plugins, like your EQs, your um, compression, your de-essers, all that. So you could select what you want, but make sure you have the sends A through E for this purpose. Go ahead and select one of the empty slots. Go to bus, bus menu one through 128 in my case, and then select the same bus that you just used for the aux input. So bus 11 and 12. All right, a little fader pops up here. And now I could adjust this to see how much level is going from this audio track into this aux input. So that's what this fader does. It tells me how much is sending from here to here. So let's leave this all the way down to start and I'm gonna exit it because I still need to set up the reverb unit. So on my aux reverb right here, I need to put an actual reverb plugin. So on the insert, I'm gonna select the first one here, go over to reverb and let's just do the stock deverb. And here we go. This time you leave the mix at 100%. The reason for that is because you already have a dry signal here and when you're sending it out, what it's doing is sending a copy of this dry signal and you're blending it into the reverb. So that's where you get the blend, reverb versus dry. So you're not needing to blend it here. And if you do blend it here, it's just gonna sound like you're doubling up on your dry signal and it's gonna be louder. So that's why you don't wanna do that. You wanna leave it at 100% when you're on your actual reverb or your aux input. So we have our reverb setting, it's set at 100%, we're good there. Now we go ahead and just click on this so the fader pops back up and let's turn it, I'm gonna mute the ad-libs for now just so we hear this one. And we're going to turn this up so we can start getting more and more reverb. The higher you turn it up, the more reverb you hear, the lower, the less reverb. So when I press play, it's gonna have none and then I'll increase it. Check one, two, check, 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 check one, two, check one, two, check. You could get a lot of reverb on there. So let's say you want to blend it back to about right here. Check one, two, check, 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 check one, two, check one, two, check. 
Check one, two, check, 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 check one, two, check one, two, check. All right, cool. So you have some reverb mixed in there, but you also have your dry signal, and that's how you determine how much you want of it. Now let's jump over to our ad libs. Go do the same exact thing. Go to bus and select 11 and 12, or whichever one you started with, 11 and 12 there. And I could adjust how much I want. I could have more reverb on the ad libs, or I could have less reverb on the ad libs compared to the other vocals in the track. So let's say I want the ad libs to have a lot of reverb. Check one, two, check, 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 check one, check. two, check, check one, two, check. All right, so that's one way to go about it. I'll back it off a little bit there. But now I have reverb on my vocals, uh, my main vocals, and I have reverb on my ad libs, and they're sending in at a little bit different levels, but they're both being sent into this unit right here, and it's the same settings for that. Now, another thing that you might wanna do is take advantage of the solo safe feature. And what that is, is say I solo this out right here and I press play. Check one, two, check, 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 check one, two, check one, two, check. I don't hear any of that reverb anymore. And the reason for it is because this reverb unit, it's not soloed along with the, the vocals. So you could do this, Check one, two, check, 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 check one, two, check one, two, check. Now I have a little bit of the reverb, but you don't wanna to have to solo your reverb every single time you solo out a vocal. So the way to always have it soloed is solo safe. So you hold down command on your keyboard and click the solo button and it grays it out. So now no matter what, I can solo this one, I can solo that one. This one always stays soloed along with it and it'll always have the reverb on there. So that's just another thing that is really handy uh, if you're wondering why am I not hearing my reverb when I solo a vocal, that's why. All right, so that is your audio track. That is your aux input and when to use it. You could put the reverb directly on the inserts, but if it's a lot of different tracks, it's beneficial to create one of these aux inputs and use the reverb on that instead. So I'm gonna show you another uh, track so shift command n I'm gonna go stereo on this one because what this one's gonna be is my master fader so if I go down to master fader uh, and then it automatically names it master which is great I can press create and it's good to go so this is going to be where everything is routed into and all the audio goes out of here so if I press play you'll see the audio coming through here check one two check 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 check, check one check. two Check, check one, two, check. All right, so this master fader is a combination of this one, this one, and the reverb all together coming through the master. So that's where all the audio is coming through. And like I said, you could do plugins on here if you'd like, uh, like the final limiter to make everything louder, or maybe an EQ, so you EQ everything together. So this is uh, just a way for everything to group and send out the final fader um, of your session. All right, so that's it. That's all I wanna cover. Those are the basics of it. You have your audio track for recording in your audio. You learned whether to use mono, like a single microphone, or stereo if you have two microphones. And then whether to use your reverbs on or your delays on the tracks itself, on the audio track itself. If it's just one track, then go ahead and just put your delay or your reverb on that track and then use the mix setting to back it off to whatever amount you want so you have a little bit of the dry signal and you have a little bit of the reverb or the delay or whatever it is. If you're using multiple audio tracks and you want, you want the same reverb settings for all of them, instead of having to put it on every single track, you could just simply create the aux input like we did here, put that reverb unit on there and then send from the audio tracks into that aux input make sure that inputs the same here as these. And then that way you could have the settings uh, of that same reverb for everything. And you could put different levels on every single audio track and customize it like that. All right, so that is audio tracks, aux inputs, and your master fader, when to use them and why, what they're for. So hopefully that broke down the very basics of routing your audio inside of Pro Tools. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments. And if you ever want to check out more, then head over to hiphopaudioschool.com where I have mixing courses, templates, and I offer my mixing mastering service. All right, so thank you guys for checking this out. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.